Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Yes, I am David. Today's conversation is real. I don't know how it is going to end, but let us jump in. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14. This statement was said to Saul. This statement precedes the man David, last of eight sons of Jesse from Bethlehem. Obed the father of Jesse and Jesse the father of David. Ruth 4 and verse 22. <laughs> David's great-grandmother was Ruth. You remember Ruth from Moab, right? But who is David? David is the man who is listening to this message today. Strong, passionate, talented, sensitive, flawed, but a man with a good heart. David is you and me. We really meet him in a weird situation. Saul, the first king of Israel, had messed up royally and God had rejected him. Meaning, while Saul was still king, God told Samuel, the chief judge in Israel, that he had already found Saul's replacement, a man after God's own heart. The day Samuel went to anoint this man who God had chosen, Samuel learned a lesson. Samuel saw the first of eight boys and was convinced that this first one was the right man, except God said to him, People look at the outward appearance, Samuel, but the Lord looks at the heart. They went through seven young men and God said, no, sir. So they sent for the last one, the least likely one to become king. He was tending sheep. Who wants a sheep farmer to be king over a nation? Surely we could find someone more qualified, like say someone with higher education, a surgeon or an engineer or a professional athlete or a successful attorney, but a shepherd? Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. From that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. 1 Samuel 16, 12 to 13. David, the shepherd boy, was the one who single-handedly killed a lion and a bear, two creatures who preyed on the flock of sheep. David was the one who killed Goliath, the enemy giant, who for 40 days drove fear into the whole army of Israel. The trained military men saw a champion who stood approximately nine and three quarters feet, a helmet that weighed about 125 pounds and a spear with a sharp point that weighed about 15 pounds. That is a scary character. But David saw an opportunity to bring down, to destroy the enemy that comes to destroy God's people. <laughs> mm, yes, you, David, remember who you are. Don't be afraid of the giants that Satan presents before you. Giants must fall in the name of Jesus. Don't live with giants because they come to kill you. You know some of the giants in our lives as men. Sex, money, fame, career, girls, fun. You can add some of your personal giants to the list. Remember that you are a child of God, a man of God. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 and verse 7. God is talking to David. God is talking to you. Don't put on the army outfit that the world gives you. You would never succeed. Instead, put on the whole armor of God and not the world's weapons because our most sophisticated weapons cannot bring down our Goliaths. David chose five stones. Your stones are the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the Bible, prayer, which tears down strongholds, those stubborn barriers, a renewed mind, a heart that seeks after God. David was a friend. Jesus is described as a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Well, David's friend was the son of Saul, the king who wanted David dead. Get it? Jonathan was by law the next king of Israel. 
and his best friend was the man God had chosen to become king of Israel after his father died. Jonathan, are you for real? Jonathan, you should be trying to kill David. Instead, you have become David's best friend. Their friendship was classic. Jonathan protected David from planned efforts of his father. Jonathan sacrificed his relationship with his father for the life of his friend. These two men were closer than blood brothers, and Jonathan never once showed any envy for David's future as king instead of him. These two men, they took an oath to seal their friendship because of the brotherly love they shared. The bond between them was so real that when David heard of Jonathan's death, death he wept bitterly. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. 2 Samuel 1 verses 25 and 26. He called him Brother Jonathan. Every David needs a friend like Jonathan, that friend who would do anything for you out of love and not for what they can get out of you. Every David needs a friend who's got his back fully. You need that kind of friend. David loved women, beautiful women. David was like you. He adored women. In 2 Samuel 5 and verse 13, we read, After he left Hebron, David took many concubines and wives in Jerusalem, and more sons and daughters were born to him. You get the picture? We know the story of Bathsheba. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and formalized it by killing her husband and marrying her. That story almost brought his kingdom down. But when David was confronted by the man of God, Nathan, the man who failed, the king turned to God in utter repentance, prayed a prayer that we see in Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He was truly sorry for his sins. David teaches you and I and me to own up to our sins and be willing to turn to God and repent. One more thing about David. One more thing about you. You are a son of God. You love God and God loves you and that is a relationship that you must treasure. Your God takes his relationship with you seriously. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Second Samuel 7 verses 14 to 16. That was a word that God said of David. Nearly a thousand years after David's death, the great Apostle Paul was giving an exhortation to a group of Christians, Jews and Gentiles. In the middle of his exhortation, Paul spoke about David, the man who was chosen by God, but he sinned horribly and God rejected him. Well, that was Saul. But listen to what Paul said about David. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior, Jesus. Acts 13, 22 to 23. Yes, I am David. You are David. He was king, shepherd, and the list goes on. But I'm a man who struggles with sin, but I don't let sin control me because I know who I am. God forgave me and I choose to live a godly life. 
I am the man who said, The Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you look for me, you will find me serving God. I don't deserve all that God has done for me, but his grace and mercy? <laughs> when I'm gone, I want to be remembered as David, a man after God's own heart.